welcome back to my channel and today we are going to do kind of a different video. I have been doing my worst and favorite of 2017, talking about all new releases, whether it's amazing, whether it's horrible, and I kind of wanted to talk about the middle ground makeup that released. Things that were just kind of meh, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad products. They're just things that I got, and I may have been really excited when I got it and really liked it, and then I put it in my makeup drawer, and now it just sits there, not enticing me to pull it out and use it again. So we're going to be discussing some makeup releases of 2017 that were just kind of eh. First up is the Lorac California Dreaming Eyeshadow Palette. Now, this also, I think this was like early spring of 2017. We have these shades here. I did talk about this in a haul follow-up, although the colors are really nice and it does have some unique shades. This particular formula is like even softer and more powdery than the regular Lorac Pro formula, which is saying a lot because the Lorac Pro formula is pretty stinking powdery. And I enjoyed using this. You can create some very, you know, soft and subtle and really pretty, just delicate looks. And I really enjoyed it when I first got it. The shade Seaside and Kitty Cat and Boots um, 65 degrees overcast. This is some very unique shades and the quality is good. It just kind of just you know, meh. I didn't see this release get a lot of, I didn't hear a lot of people talking about it. I didn't see it in a lot of anti hauls or anything like that. It just kind of just flew over, under, whatever the radar. Now, a release that didn't fly under or over the radar that was just kind of, eh, in my opinion, is the Becca Plus Chrissy Teigen palette. I feel like when this came out, it was getting anti-hauled left and right. Everyone was talking about it. We were talking about how similar it was to the Jaclyn Hill palette and all kinds of yada, yada, yada. It just got a lot of whatever. I had absolutely no intention of purchasing this. I didn't necessarily anti-haul it, but I was like, those shades are probably going to be too dark on my pale complexion. And then I got it, and I absolutely loved it. Pictures do not do this palette justice. It's absolutely beautiful to look at. You get a bronzer, two highlight shades, and a blush here. It is beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, and it sits in my drawer. Now, I'm not the type of person to rotate my makeup seasonally, meaning I don't look at something and specifically say, oh, I'll use that in winter slash fall instead of spring and summer. I wear what I want, when I want, depending on whatever. This does skew kind of more as a spring-summer palette. But I just, you know, it's pretty. It's whatever. You get rose gold here. You get beach nectar here. Malibu Soleil and Hibiscus Bloom. It just isn't something that I think about and I pull out all the time because it isn't necessarily exceptionally innovative. I have rose gold. I have just other Becca palettes even that inspire me more. It's beautiful. The packaging is stunning and the products inside are very good. It's just kind of just, eh. it was a hype and then the hype died down. Even though I think it's limited edition, it's still freaking available. I'm like, what's that about? And another face palette that was just kind of eh for me is the Tardis Pro Glow. I keep that plastic in there because clacky, clacky, clacky of uh, this shade right here, which is a freaking cream contour. And now that I've touched it in a powder palette. Now it is a very good cream contour, don't get me wrong, and this sculpt shade is absolutely amazing. I would have loved it if they just kept, like, turned this shade, right, it, all it's called is shade, is shade, just shade in your face. If they had taken that and made it a powder, that would be amazing. This is definitely a packaging pet peeve of mine. The highlighters are beautiful. This one is a little bit glittery, kind of subtle. 
I have used it multiple times. I've used every product in here. Excuse me. But it's not a face palette that I am going to reach for all the time. And the eyeshadow palette that came out with this kind of like pro whatever Tardis Pro line, I absolutely love. Now, although it is really pretty, it's just it's kind of a pain to use because I still need to create a flap for this here so that I can go in. If I'm going to use a highlighter, I have to make sure that this is covered so that it doesn't get highlighter all up in it. And it's just a little bit cumbersome to work with. The products are nice on the inside. I just wish that maybe they had thought through that cream contour a little bit more. And also the double doors doesn't do it for me either. And it's pretty, I like how it looks on my skin when I do my makeup with it, but it's just one of those things where you think about using it and it's a little bit frustrating and too much work. Kind of a little product here. These have all been palettes. This is the Urban Decay, the Illuminizer Translucent Pressed Beauty Powder. You guys know I have crazy dry skin. I am all about being nice and illuminated. Eh. I mean, I look at this and I think about how my makeup looked when I used it. And I kind of have the same feeling towards this as I do the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Trio palette that I have. It's pretty. It's supposed to do something nice. I don't see that much of a difference. It's not, see the thing about these is they're not products I regret buying. They're just things that are just kind of floating through my collection, occasionally getting used, which is horrible. I know, I know. And the other problem I had with this, and this is kind of a bit of a problem thing, is it's supposed to be illuminating, but it's kind of like the color of my skin tone. It's not brightening. So if I were to like use this, usually I would use this to set my um, concealer on my under eye. It kind of takes away the brightening of the concealer and doesn't do very much illuminating. So it kind of defeats the purpose of it. So it's okay. The packaging is really pretty. Um, yeah. Then a palette that is probably, you know, everyone's, like, worst of is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture. I got this palette. It was one of those things where I, like, ordered it as soon as it was, like, available. And then all the YouTube videos started popping up. And I was like, is this a dream? Is this a nightmare? Am I going to wake up from this? And the palette's going to be fine. Like, what is going on here? And no, the, you know, it wasn't fine. It was just, you know, but it wasn't horrible to me. I did not have the absolute terrible experience with it that everyone else had. Yes, it is not modern Renaissance quality. You can see in this Roxy shade, it looks way more used than I have used. A lot of the darker colors are a little bit difficult to blend. It just doesn't have that same quality consistency that we're used to seeing from Anastasia Beverly Hills. That being said, I do absolutely love the color spectrum of this. This is grungy, earthy, 90s, 70s. I just love this color scheme and I can make the palette work. I just don't draw to it like I do Modern Renaissance or a bunch of my other Anastasia palettes because thinking about dealing with it kind of just, uh, you know, I'm like, do I want to have to deal with it or I want to have to blend the extra five minutes or what? So for that reason, this was just okay for me. It wasn't amazing, but it also wasn't horrendously terrible like everyone else's was. And last but not least, we have the Too Faced Clover palette. It is absolutely beautiful. I do have a review on this. I will leave that down below. Colors in here look beautiful. This shade is the most pigmented in the palette. It does look like it's been wrecked, which is a little bit annoying. I mean, it was okay. It was not, I, there were three of these tin palettes that Too Faced did. White chocolate, which was uh, abysmal. Then there was this one, which was kind of the middle ground, and then the chocolate gold, which was the oh, 
of the holiday trifecta going on. So this one, it's not necessarily a bad palette. I like the fact that all of the pops of colors and the neutrals go very well together. But kind of like the Lorac one we were talking about, it's just not something that I open and I'm like, yes, these colors scream to me. I absolutely love them. You know, I admit I got it because I wanted to review it for you guys. The packaging is adorable and I'm a Too Faced junkie, so it's not an excuse, but it's a reason. So it's not awful. It's not amazing. And it's just kind of that perfect middle ground of something that I look at and I'm like, yeah, I spent money on you and... Now I don't use you a lot, but I'm going to keep you because I spent money on you. So that was kind of a new video talking about the middle ground makeup. Definitely let me know down below what makeup that you guys had in 2017 that was just okay. You know, it didn't make you tear your hair out, but it didn't make you sing to the heavens either. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah!